Michael Pettis of Carnegie Endowment saying there were no surprises and no meaningful solutions from the work report of the National People's Congress. Do you agree? Well, I don't think the annual sessions is meant to be a surprise, especially since much of the tone has already been set in the central economic work target. What is very obvious is that the emphasis is very much on fiscal stimulus. A hundred billion mm. worth of special local government bond uh, this year. And let's not forget, we've had two successive years of, uh, you know, very much supportive uh, special. Uh, and this is the uh, fiscal support that is necessary uh, really to support Supplement the monetary policy easing. So actually, if you talk about surprise, that's one there. Another one is actually the reduction in per capita energy consumption. 2.5% lower is the target. We haven't had uh, a numerical target last year. So this is another surprise out of a report. OK, interesting. So how do they get to... It's been seen as a, as a relatively ambitious growth target. Do you agree with that? And how do they get to that point? How much more fiscal stimulus is needed? It's ambitious from the perspective that maintaining 5% is becoming increasingly difficult, and many of your reporters have already pointed on that. But more importantly, there are 10 elements of the government work report that was pointed out today. Top three mm. is, number one, modernised supply chain. We talked about domestic brands, and producing that modern capacity of supply in China is number one priority for the uh, authorities. Number two is development, higher quality development, rather than just emphasis on GDP growth. And number three, very important, is to really encourage domestic consumption. So domestic consumption, confidence in consumption and investment remains a very key challenge and uh, target for Chinese authorities. OK, and of course, developing that consumption has been a long-running aim of, of officials in, in Beijing. We know that consumer sentiment is, it has, be, has been crushed in, in, in recent months, or at least, at least over the last 12 months or so. How do, how do they revive consumer sentiment in China? What are the policy tools they need to reach for? Well, throughout 2023, it's been really um, a mismatch of expectations. Markets are looking for short-term support. I think policymakers are continually looking for longer-term gain rather than, uh, you know, any short-term immediate relief. So that's why we've had the lack of confidence. Of course, other uh, areas, particularly the property sector, has been particularly um, important for lifting market sentiment. Recently, we've seen succession of uh, supportive measures, particularly in the stock market, to really ensure the markets there are still plenty of policy support in place. It's about the timing, how to roll it out, mm. how to target it and channel it to the right areas. So in the immediate aftermath of the uh, two sessions, we will likely also still see more policies being announced and implemented by the various ministries. Uh, Jenny, I know deflation deflation clearly a concern for officials as well in, in Beijing. They set themselves an inflation target of 3%. Is that realistic? Where are we in that deflationary cycle in China, in your view? I think the risks of deflation and disinflation in China domestic is very realistic. If you go to China, you'll see price cutting everywhere. And that is reality. But that said, I think base effects and other uh, uh, areas, particularly uh, in, in terms of food and others, we may see some moderate uh, increase in that CPI inflation. So setting a target and keeping it constant is key here. But I think all over the world, we may see the impact of price cutting coming out of China. But that hopefully will be offset by increasing consumption out of China, and that will have implications for global prices.